Okay, I wanted to just throw in this extra video to further illustrate the value of callable workflows. And the context that I want to use here is this idea of mapping. So whenever you're dealing with different systems, each of those systems has their own structures of data, right? So, and for us, that's, you know, those structures are all dealt with in JSON form. So you can see here, like I have this form submission with a values object and that values object has properties within it that represent all the data for, for my form submission. Now, if, if in our scenario where we want to create a lead because it doesn't exist in our CRM yet, then our CRM is Salesforce. And Salesforce has its own object structure. So you can see this when you look at um, the properties panel in Trey. We, we actually represent that object structure in a subtle way. So, so in the in an example, like let's say if we want to create a lead, right? So I want to create a record, which is a lead here. And in order to create a lead, you need to create fields, right? And there's some of those are often required. You need an email address, you need a name. There's required fields for that, right? And, and so the way that the Salesforce connector works is the object structure is an array and that's actually it's represented here in this data type drop down so it's an array and if you add an item to that array or you want to add a field so let's say we want to update uh, first name right so if i choose first name here the, the, the way that i would add that first name in tray as a variable from my form submission is to find the path to that variable, right? So um, uh, an example here from this run is it's body.values.email. So I can map to that, right? So I can say body.values email that's not a first name actually <laughs> hello got first name excuse me so then if I want to add an email right I just do the same thing body that values that email So this is kind of manual if you'll see, right? Like I have to add each of these items to this record fields array. It's not a big deal, but as you build more and more workflows, I like to think about speed and, and that's what I want as a builder is speed. So we built a workflow that's really cool. It, you can, it's a callable workflow once again. So it's like a standalone microservice, if you will. And what it does is it maps objects to different structures that we commonly use. So if I wanna create a Salesforce lead, I'm not gonna actually do that. I'm gonna put a terminate here and block that from happening. But I just wanna show you what the power of callable workflows can do through the context of this pattern where we need to change the structure of objects. So I have a utility called the standard object mapper. And by standard objects, I just mean objects that we commonly use between steps of workflows. So in this case, if I want to create a lead, what this workflow allows me to do is I can take it from a form structure, because I know that every time I get a form from my website, it's in this values object. And I want to take it to a Salesforce structure. 
And there's two structures for Salesforce. You can have standard objects, which would kind of look like this. Property key values, right? Property name, property value. Or I can turn it to an update structure, which was that array of objects, right? So, so these are options that we built into this callable workflow. And so the next thing I want to do is I want to pass this the values object, right? So I'm going to pass it the whole body of the form. And what we're doing here is we're transforming to SFDC update. That's, that's the function of, of this step. So if I want to come over here and send this into my workflow, So I've done my I've done my lead lookup. It doesn't exist. Therefore, we go down the false branch, which is where we want to create the lead. I sent the values object to my mapping workflow. And when it replies, it replies back with all the different structures in update form that we can use. So in this case, I wanted to create a lead. Right, so I have this lead array with all the values Ready? I need to all the values I need to update. And so here I can also choose to not do it in an update structure. I'm just showing examples of, of again how we can use these workflows. And in this case, I don't want it to be an array of items that I can use to update or create a record in Salesforce. Now I just get it back in a standard object structure. And I have all the field names that Salesforce expects these properties to be in. So for example, with Marketo, the Munchkin ID is what we call that property in our form object. But Salesforce calls that the MKTO71 underscore original refer C. Right? And so, so doing this in the form of a workflow makes building much quicker. And the really interesting part about this is you can, you can do it to many different structures. And this really is what I mean by speed. So if I want to take this now from Salesforce structure Right. And instead, I want to use, I'm just going to use this output here. So I want to go like this. And I just want to use the response from this workflow. And I want to take this structure and I want to turn it to another one. Right. What I can do, so that's inside the result are the objects that I want to transform. And I want to go to what we call the growth ops object structure. And you're going to see a little bit about this in the next part of the post. So what I've done is I've got the lead in. I've looked for it. It's not here. I've transformed it to a Salesforce structure. And now I want to transform it to the growth ops structure just to show you this, and sort of conceptually how this can, can work. OK, transform to Salesforce. Now we're going to transform it back to growth ops. And now I have this in my growth ops object structure. I have a person, I have an attribution object, right? So all this stuff that I use for attribution data is now in the attribution object. This is what the lead pipeline expects. So all the intake workflows, what they do is they capture these leads in their different structures and sources, and they format it into a standard object structure. And then it puts it through the rest of the pipeline so it's predictable and reliable in its structure and it makes it really easy to stand new sources up and to move between different systems. So this is probably one of our most powerful and my favorite workflows because it makes the process of moving data between workflows and systems much faster. It's an advanced concept. You don't have to do it this way. We have other options. Um, we have the data mapper 
And so you can do it with this as well. Uh, it's a little, the reason we've done it this way is it's, it's a little less manual and, and I could do a whole nother post on how that, how this, this workflow works. But again, just want to really articulate the power of callable workflows and how they can really speed up your build time on Trey.